Welcome to a video on why EGR valves are the devil. EGR valves were invented for one or two purposes, um, one of which, and pretty much the only one of note, is emissions, which you shouldn't care about. When your EGR valve is turned on, it passes hot air that's been burnt through the engine and puts it back in for another burn cycle, thus giving you a more complete oxygen burn. Cold air in the engine means more power. Warm air into the engine, warm used air into the engine, means less power. There are two ways in which you can turn off your EGR valve. One is you unplug the damn thing using bolts. Using my rod of learning, I will show you. This is the inlet manifold, and the EGR passes hot recycled exhaust gases through in here and into the combustion cycle of the engine but it's warm so it's less dense, less power but it comes out of the exhaust section which is further down here now that's just been through all the muckiest parts of the engine and is probably oily and sooty if you look in here there's all this oil and shit has all fallen out from the pipe you don't want that back inside your engine so there's some very heavy duty blanking plates have been bolted into place on this engine which means that all the oily crap doesn't get back in and it means that this engine runs on cold air all the time so this is what the actual EGR valve looked like you can see the exhaust pipe carried the gases up through this little valve and it controlled how much of this shitty gas gets into the main engine what we want is for none of it to get in. This valve is controlled by the vacuum system of the engine and there's this little rod in between, inside, this little push rod piston thing which moves back and forward. You can just about see it moving there but that basically opens a valve and allows hot air to flow through the system and back into the engine. But you can see this is pretty bogging and this is one of the cleaner ones I've seen. You don't really want that inside your engine. So for a mechanical system or a mechanical only system uh, your only option is to remove it and blank it off. The other way is actually to remap the thing out, or some combination of the two. What we're looking at here is a 3D representation of an EGR map. So, engine speed is on this axis here, airflow going through the engine, and finally the injected quantity of fuel being requested to flow into the engine. When the engine is being sent full fuel delivery, there is no EGR valve turned on. What's the, that's what this flat section is at the top. Also, when there's very low RPM in the engine, i.e. stall conditions, there's no EGR being allowed to flow into the engine. That's because it wants pure cold air to keep the thing alive. Um, at varying stages of low power demand and low RPM, there's different quantities of exhaust gas being recirculated into the engine. Um, and what happens here is the engine is allowed to fill um, exhaust gas uh, recircle it in to top up the cold air flow into the engine and that's what this graph is controlling. So the higher the value on this mass airflow uh, in the map, the less EGR is allowed to pass into the engine. So this is VAG EDC suite, which is very simple to use remapping program. But let me see what I'm going to do here is in this first row at 0.5 milligrams per stroke of fuel requested you can see that 150 uh, grams of air um, is requested and all of the rest of that uh, everything else the engine can take is supplied by recirculated air if I increase this um, by adding uh, let's say if I add 400 uh, to this value that means that at maximum the EGR is only allowed to pass in 550 in other words, we get more cold air. The same with these sections down here, they're highlighted in green, very easy to see in this piece of software. If I add another, let's say if I add uh, 200 to these, again, we bump up the amount of cold air that gets fed into the engine. And then at this point here, where probably peak boost is on the engine, I'm gonna set all of these manually to 800. Now that we've modified that map, and it was a clumsy modification, but it should serve to show you what we're doing. Now, the section where we're at 800 milligrams per stroke of cold air is now a huge section on the top. So actually, the EGR is only going to be effective between about 900 RPM and about 1800 RPM. Once we're into the full boost range of the turbo, we're not allowing any exhaust gas to be recirculated at all. So in some engines, you can control the EGR purely by software. You flash this into the car's ECU, and the EGR is effectively turned off. Um, but in most modern cars, you now need to do a mixture of the two. The glory days of just being able to remove and blank off the pipes, those days are kind of gone. So one way or another, we've reduced the amount of hot recycled air, um, and the amount of oily crap and debris that gets back through the inlet manifold of the engine, either by mapping it or by removing it, 
This piston goes in and out less, which means you get more cold air into the engine. Pros, you get more cold air into the engine, which means more power. You get less crap and debris coming back into the engine. Small improvements to fuel economy, because more cold air means a more complete burn of the fuel that you've injected into the engine. And I suppose it can be done for free. Swag. In terms of cons, the only one we can think of is slightly increased emissions. That is it. Well that's it for another hopefully informative episode of Ghetto Mods. Um, we hope you go out there and turn off all your EGR valves and uh, continue the quest for more power. Uh, if you can think of anything we've missed from this video, of course let us know in the comments box and we'll have a bit of a keyboard war. Um, and other than that, have a look at some of our other videos and see what other mods you can do for your car.